Um, I'm Collins Mitambo. I'm a medical doctor by profession. I work in the uh, Minister of Health uh, in the research unit and um, uh, this research unit is now being merged with other uh, sectors uh, to form what you call the Public Health Institute of Malawi. So uh, within the Minister of Health, uh, I work as a uh, uh, research and uh, knowledge translation uh, coordinator. Uh, so uh, basically I coordinate uh, uh, the work of the knowledge translation platform. Mm -hmm. Um, so what does that involve, by you coordinating the work of the KTP? What does that look like? Um, let me try to explain what KTP is all about. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about the Nori Transition Platform, this is an initiative um, uh, which is um, uh, supported by the World Health Organization through the F uh, uh, Evidence Informed Policy Network, FEPNET. So uh, the main aim of this uh, knowledge transition platform is to reduce the gap between the uh, policy makers and, uh, and researchers. So basically what we want is when researchers want to, uh, to give information to the policy makers, they should easily uh, get to the, uh, to the policy makers. Likewise, when policy makers, when they are making uh, decisions um, which need evidence, it can be research evidence or any other evidence, they should easily reach up to people who can provide the, uh, the evidence. So the knowledge transition platform, it, uh, uh, the main aim is to reduce that gap between researchers and policy makers. And um, um, as, a, as a coordinator uh, for this uh, initiative, I, um, I'm, I'm involved in uh, coordinating all the activities which are, which, are, which are involved in the knowledge transition platform. There are a lot of activities and uh, some of the activities include uh, development of the policy brief, um, uh, conducting science cafes mm -hmm. and um, even uh, writing some, um, uh, some some papers informing um, the senior management team. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very well yes. Yes. Yeah, so, so Collins, you have been quite central to the secure health program in the in Malawi, mm -hmm. but you've also um, gone through the evidence informed policy making training. Mm -hmm. And I would like you to just um, describe to us the difference that this training has has made to your work. Um, when I started working as a knowledge transition uh, uh, coordinator, um, I initially didn't get proper training like to how to do this job, right? Um, I've received some other trainings in, um, uh, uh, in other forums, uh, but uh, attending now the secure health training um, added more um, uh, skills on how I, how I should be uh, doing uh, my job. Uh, for example, I've already said that uh, one of the main aim of like the job which I do is to produce policy brief. And um, uh, during the training which I attended uh, through the secure uh, secure health, um, the training was more focused on pro production of policy brief. So uh, I access I, I I acquired knowledge on how to access information, how to grade it. Um, um, and another important thing is also how to communicate the information because you can read a lot of scientific uh, uh, papers but for you to communicate to the policy maker it's, it's also uh, a skill which you need to, to acquire not everybody can manage to communicate to the policy makers and um, being working in the in, in the health sector the health sector is a bit like a uh, specialized profession uh, when you read research uh, research papers you find that um, the the language which is used is not um, it's not easy to be understood by a normal person. So you also need to acquire that skill of how you are going to communicate to the policy makers. Yes, yes, yeah. So during that training, I uh, I, 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 I acquired those kind of skills, and um, uh, after the training, I, I noticed that the way I was working was a bit different. Uh, uh, compared to the time well, I, I, I did attend the training. Mm -hmm. So are you able to maybe um, cite, say, one example of a task that you have undertaken differently um, because of the experiences um, that you've had through the training? Um, I remember there was uh, a time when um, uh, one of the senior members uh, was uh, supposed to, to be involved in a, in a, in a, in a dialogue, like a, um, uh, a, focus, uh, a focus group, not, not a focus group, but on a panel, mm -hmm. yes, at, uh, at an international conference. 
So before that member, there was a senior senior member in the yes. in the Minister of Health, yes, uh, was supposed to attend and to be part of the panel. So uh, during that time, they asked the research unit to bring out information, the evidence uh, concerning uh, uh, that topic. It was um, a, um, a, a topic on um, uh, information technology and health. Mm -hmm. So we are supposed to uh, bring information what we think uh, is the uh, importance of IT mm -hmm. uh, in terms of health. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So um, that was one one way how I use the uh, the skills which I gained from the from the from the training because. It was supposed to be produced within a short period of time. How like many days did you have hours? I think it was 24 hours. 24 hours? 24 hours, yes. Okay. So I was supposed to access the evidence uh, to, to, to grade it and then bring uh, a four-page document yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, about, about the, uh, uh, how uh, IT can, 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 can affect health. And um, uh, actually, we are supposed to to indicate uh, what what are the challenges for Malawi in terms of research, what is being done, and it was a, a compressive um, uh, compressive uh, uh, assignment. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was one way how I uh, felt like I used uh, 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 the, the skills from the training. And um, the other way how I also used uh, uh, the skills is uh, through production of policy brief. We are now producing several policy briefs through the community of practice. So through the knowledge transition platform, we have got community of practice, like specialized, um, or people who have got interest in a specific issue. issue. Yeah. So for, for example, we managed to produce a policy brief on uh, uh, non-communicable disease and, um, okay. and HIV. Uh, so uh, the skills which I gained from, from the training was also uh, added value, add, add value to that, uh, to that uh, policy brief. Okay. Yeah. Um, if I may bring you back to the question of the difference the training uh, um, has made, but more importantly for us is the difference the Secure Health Program has made to mm. the Ministry of Health. Mm. Um, so if you talk more broadly, what, what difference, if, if at all, do you think the Secure Health uh, Program has made to the Ministry of Health? Um, in terms of the difference, uh, use of research, like this, issue of talking about use of evidence, 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 um, is still new in Malawi. Yeah? Uh, people have been mentioned about evidence, but we haven't been taking it um, uh, on board, like serious to be talking about uh, evidence. So even when you look at the knowledge transition platform, it has just started in 2012. Uh, so it's, it's fairly new. And uh, there are, initially there are no proper support, uh, are, like other leaders or maybe stakeholders to be uh, involved in uh, 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 advocating for use of, uh, of evidence. Mm -hmm. So with the coming of the Secure Health, Pro uh, 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 the Secure Health Program, mm -hmm. we, as a, as a Minister of Health, we had, um, we felt like we have got another partner who is now taking evidence um, as, a, as, as one of the core business. Mm -hmm. So. In terms of what say, the program has done to uh, like a change um, in terms of the Minister of Health, one, I can say people are now talking about evidence. We can now talk about evidence and um, every time when you want to make a decision, at least now people are mentioning about is, is there evidence or, or, or something like that. And the other thing is also that um, we, are, we, we, we have like entry points in every uh, section. Because what we want to have, we want to have like every directorate or every unit. We should have somebody else who is like a champion for evidence. Yeah. yeah. At least now we have got uh, uh, a person whom we can call when we want to uh, to, to, to to maybe to advocate for something like evidence uh, uh, in terms of evidence. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing which I feel like uh, um, uh, it has the secure health program has uh, has, has has made a change in, in, in terms of the. Uh, uh, the Minister of Health. And these are the people who have been trained in the evidence in conference Yes, okay. yes, yeah. Um, basically, I think those, those are some of the things which have, which have yeah. changed in the yeah. Minister of Health. Yeah. When you think about um, the barriers to the use of evidence within the ministry, but also in the health sector in Malawi, um, of course, we did a study at the beginning of the program, and I'm sure we talked with you about the barriers. 
Uh, but two years later, with the implementation of this 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 uh, program, we understand that barriers to research use are so many. Mm -hmm. You know, and this program mm -hmm. is only trying to um, respond to a few. Um, so. Reflecting on that, what are like maybe the top three barriers you feel still remain and need to be addressed when you think about um, evidence and public policy making within the malaria sector? Um, of course, there are several bar bar yeah. barriers, yeah. and um, if, if, if I should say top three. <laughs> well, top yeah. three, oh, the, 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 the main <laughs> reasons. Yeah. Um, the first thing is um, uh, one motivation, motivation to use um, uh, to use evidence. Mm -hmm. So you find that maybe uh, within the system, uh, there's no any other motivation or pulling factor to make people use evidence. Mm -hmm. You find that maybe some sometimes a person can have evidence, but uh, that evidence cannot be taken on board mm -hmm. and uh, end up being um, uh, discouraged. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe this the supervisors they're not very interested in research, so that mm -hmm. motivation, mm -hmm. it's one of the, of the factors. Mm -hmm. um, the other one, it's um, accessing the, 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 uh, the evidence. So you find that for you to access evidence, mm -hmm. you need to know where to get it from. And when you, when, when you know where to get it from, that resource should be there. So I find that uh, in most of the, ministry, like, uh, the, the department of the Minister of Health, they, they don't have uh, access to journals, they don't have access to maybe other newsletters, um, even um, internet, it's a, it's a problem. Yeah, so that is also another uh, uh, a common barrier among, among uh, several departments in the Ministry of Health. The other thing is, uh, uh, the knowledge, I can say the knowledge to to, 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 find to, to find, to use grade. it, and how to, to grade it. Mm -hmm. Yes, the secure health trained people, but when you look at uh, how, many, how, many, how many do you have like yes. civil servants within the Ministry of Health? Yes. There are few, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We expect the people who are trained to also be training others, mm -hmm. but it's not, it's not something which is, can be done within a day. So the majority, they are still yeah. not aware or doesn't have the skills on how to use access and, um, and even um, how to present the evidence which they have. Mm -hmm. So I can say the, 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 the most uh, uh, top three is uh, 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 lack, lack of knowledge, mm -hmm. resources, and uh, uh, lack of motivation among the workers. You bring in an interesting issue about um, uh, the fact that majority of the MOA staff um, haven't been trained and gained from this. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I remember when we were doing this election, we had a challenge even getting the numbers we wanted. Um, mm -hmm. I think Secure Health planned to train up to 30 uh, uh, Ministry of Health staff. Uh, but even getting the number 30 was a problem. So for the remaining staff, would, do you think they would be interested in this kind of training if we had, say, a second wave of this, would they really be interested? Because we struggled with getting the numbers mm -hmm. of people to even go through this training. Yeah. I think... If we can have a chance of training other people, mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the passion mm -hmm. is there. Because I remember when we, when we wanted to train the first, the first, these, these first groups, yes. it was difficult to, to find people. The numbers, yeah. Yes. But um, now what happened, after people were trained mm -hmm. and they saw what they are doing, mm -hmm. they started asking, like, when are we going to I have another training way. again? Mm -hmm said like uh, no we had two cohorts but we'll see if, if maybe we get some extension then we can we can train more people and um, uh, the other thing is also that uh, after the, uh, the, the the dissemination and the, during the launch of the guidelines uh, after other people presented mm -hmm. then other other directors started asking like ah when I also go to to train other people in terms of the policy brief so this there's a, so there's, a, there's still a need, yes, yes. yes. So Maybe because initially people they didn't know what yeah, they're supposed to be trained. Yeah. 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 Okay.
like secure camp, start something else, and then after we are gaining momentum, now it's like nah, the 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 the, the period is is over. So um, one thing which is um, which is bothering me is about the um, the use of the guidelines. We've launched the guidelines, but the program is now continuing beyond the guidelines, right? It would be good if we if we've got the guidelines. We also need to train people on, on the guidelines within the Minister of Health. And when I talk about the Minister of Health, we are talking about uh, the whole of Malawi. We don't just talk about the national level, the middle level managers. No, those guidelines they need to be disseminated at uh, at uh, district level. Yeah, district level, and then we need to train them uh, on how to use the guidelines. We can disseminate the guidelines, going there, drop the books but they can't use them because maybe they don't have uh, uh, the skills or maybe the knowledge uh, uh, on how to use the guidelines. So the Secure Health Program, if there was a possibility, we are supposed to, one, train the people on the guidelines and then disseminate them at the, at the district level. The other thing is also about the, um, uh, this issue of reducing the, uh, like increasing the interaction between policymakers and, and, uh, and researchers. Uh, because through the, the Science Cafe, uh, the Science Cafe received the positive feedback from uh, most, most of the participants. So um, I would prefer if we could have also continued with this um, uh, Science Cafe. We have conducted some Science Cafe, but it's in different areas. We haven't tackled all the areas uh, 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 concerning health. So at least if we can continue with the, with the Science Cafe. Yeah. And um, the other thing is also about training. We train people, yes, we did some training, but we also need to train more. We also need to have uh, some mentorship uh, program among the, um, the, the other workers. And uh, uh, yeah, basically I think these are, these are some of the things which we need to, to do.